and welcome back to another episode of The Practice Odyssey. My name's Alex. And I'm Jen. And for any new listeners out there, The Practice Odyssey is your one-stop shop for all things flute and music related, where we take a method or an app or something to better your life, and we do it for two weeks. We do everything that they say to do, exactly how they say it, and then we report to you, the listeners, uh, if it actually did change our life for the better, or did it make it worse? Yeah. We don't know. (laughs) We will find out. Yes. So this week, I'm reporting to you all from Germany in my brand new apartment, which is very exciting. How about you, Jen? Where are you today? Just the usual, but I want to hear more about this move. So what, you've just moved into it? So you've spent all this week moving, I'm guessing. Uh, yes. Oh, uh, wow. The past week has been spent moving boxes <laughs> and construction, and it's been, it's been stressful. But wow. that's, you know, that's just the best time to come back to the fundamentals. <laughs> we haven't moved too far away. We've just moved to another part of town. Oh, so, okay, okay. But, uh, how about you, Jen? How's life? Where are you currently? Are you still yes, in I'm, Adelaide? Yes, I am still in Adelaide. Isn't that amazing? Um, although I just spent the weekend north of Adelaide in a place called Melrose which was delightful it's a place where there is a large mountain and um tom and uh his friends went mountain biking and i tried mountain biking Mm -hmm. but i would have to say i don't really mountain bike i more walk my mountain bike so i guess it's like a pet (laughs) um which i i move from place to place (laughs) down hills (laughs) um But yeah, it was a really beautiful spot. I highly recommend to anyone who finds themselves in South Australia, go and check out Melrose. Um, But yeah, uh, our theme for this season, listeners, uh, for those who may have missed our last episode, is uh, prequels and sequels. Yes. Where we take a prequel or a sequel to a well-known flute book and we practice it. Mm -hmm. Sort of like Star Wars and... Lord of the Rings. How much... Lord of the Rings. Mm. (laughs) There are many out there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this week we are doing a prequel and it's even a prequel to a podcast we've done this week. We're doing, uh, one of our favorite flutist, sorry, flautists. She is team flautists. Um, mm. and we're doing one of her, uh, methods. This mm-hmm. is the flute technique book one mm. by Susan Milan. And mm. for any long time listeners, uh, you may remember that in one of the previous seasons, we did her flute technique book two two mainly yes. because it was the one that jen we and i had. both had <laughs> and um <laughs> and since jen was in cambodia and it was a little tricky mm-hmm. <laughs> to get post to you yep. um it was the easiest one to do and it yep. was really it was quite fun so mm-hmm. um but yes now we're now we're going prequel styles and we're going to do book one for y'all um but yeah so jen uh do you want to tell us maybe a little bit about susan for any new listeners so we're going <laughs> back to the beginning with this one um first I'll give you a little bit of uh info about Susan Milan so but basically I'm taking her biography from uh the website of the Royal College of Music so this is very brief synopsis of what Susan Milan has been doing in her life uh because she's been doing a lot okay so a she started lot. out <laughs> yes she started out as a junior exhibitioner and scholar at the Royal College of Music where she studied with John Francis Then she continued with her postgraduate studies at the Guildhall School of Music, where she studied with Geoffrey Gilbert, big name, as well as attending the Marcel Moyes Masterclasses in Switzerland. That's another big name. After graduating, she became principal flute of the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, and um, she's performed as principal flute and soloists in the UK with uh, many of the big orchestras, including the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, London Philharmonic Orchestra, London Symphony Orchestra, Academy of St. Martin in the Fields, English Chamber Orchestra, City of London Symphonia, English String Orchestra, Scottish Chamber Orchestra, the BBC Scottish Orchestra, BBC Philharmonic Orchestra, BBC Welsh Orchestra, Philharmonica of London, New London Orchestra, Hayden Festival Orchestra, and others. I don't know if there's any other orchestras left in the UK. <laughs> anyway. I think she got them all. <laughs> she got them all. She got the, <laughs> like she got the full hat trick. I don't know if that's even a correct phrase. Um, <laughs> anyway, after all that, she also continues to travel internationally, where she gives recitals and masterclasses. And in 2019, Susan received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the National Flute Association of America. 
Um, she's also founded the British Isles Music Festival, which is an international chamber music and masterclass course for outstanding musicians, held each summer at Charterhouse School, which Alex and I have attended, and it was fantastic. So oh, I highly recommend to anyone who is uh, thinking about chamber music. But anyway, so that's a brief <laughs> brief synopsis of Susan Milan. And um, the book which of hers, which we're looking, is um, book number one from a series of two she's got um, called Flute Technique. Book one, Quadruplets. So the previous book which we looked at, which was book two in this series, um, was Triplets and Sextuplets, but this is Quadruplets. So um, basically it's uh, semi-quotas to all. Or, hold on, what's the American version? You got this. I do. Sixteenth notes. Oh. Yeah, so yeah, just any groups of four. The book is quite straightforward in its format. It starts off with a practice guide where Susan has written her thoughts and suggestions on how to use the book and the best way it can be incorporated into your practice. Um, then part two, she's got a list of all the articulations and practice rhythms which she recommends. And then you have all of the scale systems. And then right at the end, she gives an added bonus where she gives you recommended study books in progressive order. She um, has two ways to pra which she recommends this. The first is for intermediate students, so who are just beginning to develop speed. She suggests that you practice one scale, the scales beginning on C, for example. Um, and she recommends you do two articulations each day on this scale, um, which if you did that, that would leave one day free for revision or rest per week. Um, for more advanced students, um, she recommends that you do one whole scale system with all of the articulations in one, in one day. Uh, and that's really the book. So yeah. I think I'll just uh, leave it there and launch straight in. So Alex... How yes. did it? How did you begin? You got the book. <laughs> you opened the book. Did you even open the book? I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> Tell me all. I know. Ah, yes, I did open the book. I Ooh, even have the book That's amazing. Here. Considering you uh, were moving, actually, I'm very impressed. I know. <laughs> It was literally, it almost mm -hmm. got boxed up uh, when we were packing up things a few weeks ago. And yeah. then I was like, oh, no, I need oh, this. No. And maybe some other books were doing this season. And so they uh -huh. made it into my carry-on suitcase with some some looks from my husband. But uh, he, he understands <laughs> that I'm a musician, so it was okay. But uh, yes, so I do have it. I, I did have wow. it. Uh, so we are good. And first off the bat, can I just say, I, I, mm. uh, I commented this on the book too, but yeah. I want to say it again like, because maybe you haven't seen these, but book one and book two have the same cover art, except book two has it in silver and book one is in like this lovely gold combination mm. of colors on the flutes. And it is just a very lovely, it's just nice to look at. It is very well, nice. Really, yeah. I think the, the flute is one of the older, um, the Louis Lott. It looks a little mm. like a Louis Lott. So tell me more about Louis Lott. Uh, it looks old. <laughs> it looks old. <laughs> Um, usually they have a C foot, which this one does. You can tell uh -huh. by kind of the length of the flute. And mm -hmm. then also the way that the embouchure is shaped also kind of looks like a Louis lot. And yeah. then also some of the mechanisms. It is an ah. offset G. Okay. Uh, yes. Which uh, for non-flute players means that two of the keys on the flute have been pushed um, out of alignment with the rest of the keys so mm -hmm. that your ring finger on your left hand can reach them mm -hmm. if you have smaller mm -hmm. fingers. For Jen yep. and I, that's not such a problem because we have quite large hands, but it is yes. nice for people who have really small hands or they just want that little bit of extra comfort because it does make playing faster technique a little quicker. And yeah. Yeah, so I do love the artwork on the front of her book. It was mm -hmm. beautiful. And I mm -hmm. also loved, I don't know if you were going to mention this, Jen. If so, I'm so sorry. But she yeah, that's cool. mentions in there, because she's got it in multiple languages, the directions, because yes. the scales themselves are pretty self are straightforward. Um, but she um, she credits all of, all, I think, I believe all of her students. She has many students from all around the world, and she got them mm. all to help with her translations. And so she credits each one at the very bottom. And it's not just oh. one person. There's a couple of different people who did that. So I thought that I was also just a... I hadn't noticed that. It was oh, a cool. lovely touch. Um, That's really nice. 
a nice observation just at the beginning. Mm. Um, I also, um, so then I, I read through her intro. I, I found it pretty straightforward, her directions, and it was informative. And so mm -hmm. the only thing that I, I did that she doesn't say to do is I took the, um, the rhythms or the articulation sheet that she has and I mm -hmm. copied it. So that way I didn't have to flip because <laughs> I'm so lazy. Yeah. I didn't have to flip every time I wanted to see what articulation I should do. Yeah. Yep. 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 So I did do that and then I just caught, I just taped it onto my practice mirror and then went from there. Um, nice. but yeah, um, since, as I mentioned earlier, I was moving, I decided to go a little easier on my practice in the first week, when yeah. the second week too, if I'm being Fair honest. Fair enough. Um, yeah. and so what I did is I focused on one key each day mm -hmm. and I also mm -hmm. paired it with a, with a study from the consequence of sequences or an exercise from Ooh. the book that we did last week. Go listen to yes. last week's episode with about Paul Edmund Davies' new book. Um, and those were also in the same key. So I also tried to take that idea that he discussed in his book about using them as musical postcards. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to butcher these and not do what you know I love to do, <laughs> which is just play through everything in all 12 keys and just focus on one key every day, which for yeah. me was a big change because I do love just cycling through all the keys and being like, oh, yeah. look, <laughs> my ears are going to be great for hearing intonation now. And then I would do six days because Susan also says you can take a day of rest. And so I definitely leaned into that as well. I was like, thank you, Susan. <laughs> but yeah, so I did that. And so then during week one, I cycled through the keys of C all the way to F. So that's C, C sharp, D, E flat. E and then F and then mm -hmm. every day I would do a C four articulation so not two like the beginners but I would do four because mm -hmm. as I, I did like how she had all the different ones but um if you yeah for me uh, it was important to not only do just legato and slurred notes every day also to do something with some articulation so I would do one two from articulations one to ten which have mm -hmm. elements of slurs in them. Susan has 10 articulations, which incorporate variations of slurs. So sometimes mm -hmm. they would all be slurred or I would mm. com combine with like, ta -ta, ta -ta -ta -ha, ta -ta -ta -ha. like, so there would be some tongue, some articulation. So I would choose mm. um, two of those. And then I would also mm -hmm. choose, I would do every day her 11 and 12 which are single tongue and her double tonguing exercise. Yeah. So single tonguing is when you just uh, put your tongue to the front. So you just go to, 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 to. And then double tonguing is when you, a technique you use to, to tongue notes quicker because so instead of going to, 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 you go depending on who you learn from to, 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 or do, go, do, go. Um, and so then I would do that as well. So I would do a double tonguing one. So do go, 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 do Or do go, 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 do go. And I'm sorry, my allergies. It is not the clearest, but, um, but yeah. And so I would do those every day. And sometimes I would change it up kind of like how Paul does in his 28 day exercise where you go, where you do multiples on one note and then change it up a little just to give it a little bit of variety. Yeah, nice. um, that is kind of how I structured it. Um, normally, going through four of them at a pretty decent clip. <laughs> yep. um, I think yep. I started just for fun at 108, which mm -hmm. isn't super fast. Um, but then by the end, it was pretty easy, especially for the keys like C, D, and like E yeah. flat and F. And, and yeah. the ones, uh, yeah, I could get those going pretty quick. Um, so yeah, I would say normally it took me going and doing that about half an hour to get through, which during a move was totally okay. It was just set my timer, see mm -hmm. how I go. I also like that her, the range of her scales, um, go above the tonic of each scale. That is like to say the yes. main note of each scale. She goes like up to a high C on the flute, which covers all four octaves of C that you would have to play mm -hmm. normally on the mm -hmm. flute. The flute can't play mm -hmm. higher for most of the repertoire we have out there. Knowing how to play up to high C comfortably is a good, a good place to begin. So yep. yeah, I really like that. But yeah. So that was my week one, uh, being a little allergy ridden, moving and enjoying that. It only took me half an hour to get through my warm up. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how was your week one, Jen? Mm, my week one, I also 
like you, I opened the book and I read mm. I read through her practice guide and um yeah, I decided to go with the advanced <gasps> option. Ooh. So to do the one complete exercise per day. Wow. Um Good yeah. It took me a little <laughs> while. Yeah. <laughs> What I found, yeah, what what I found interesting was, okay, so I opened it up, but the big mm-hmm. difference I found with this book compared to her Flute Technique book two is she doesn't have a warm-up section. So in the book oh, two, she true. had this, she had this, yeah, this really nice kind of uh, arpeggio. So you'd pick an arpeggio if you were going to do your scales on a C major um, on, on scale starting on C, she would have you warm up with um, using the notes of C, E, and G, which is the three notes of the C major chord, um, just to get your ear kind of in, your intonation going. Um, this book, she doesn't have it. It's just pure scales. So, um, yeah, so I just brought in. I mean, I found that um, interesting and like, bang. So, yes, I chose to do the one key with all the articulations, which... Definitely took me longer than half an hour. I really liked it because it meant that through the fortnight, I went through all the keys, playing them, you know, six days, six days a week, mm-hmm. um, which was really nice. And she's right. Like, it's a really good aerobic. Actually, it is a good aerobic warm up. I mean, it really gets your air going. And um, and I also really enjoyed um, because some of the uh, articulations are was it was illuminating to play because maybe I've neglected them a little bit, particularly the um kind of syncopated articulations she's got there. So there's this one where um you slur two notes at a time, so you connect them together with air, but they're off the beat. Oh, but with this yeah. pattern, it's really easy to make um one of the notes clipped and it starts getting a little bit um all the notes are not the same, let's say, in terms of length. So she had some really great suggestions for how to practice that um, with dotted rhythm. I found that it was getting a lot better by the end of um, two weeks of practicing it, pa-ching, um, <laughs> which was great. But there was one really interesting thing. So, when, And I was really intrigued and I was having to think about why she specified that. And I was interested to get your thoughts on it, Alex. Wait, okay, hang on. I'm, I'm opening my book. Okay, so I open the book to the practice page. And she says in the second paragraph, right. she says, whatever you choose, so whether it's scale starting on C or D or G, um, practice one articulation for the complete exercise. So all of your major and minor scales, all of your arpeggios, major and minor, all of your diminished and dominant um, arpeggios and your chromatic Mm -hmm. do it all in one articulation then you go back to the beginning of the page and you do them all again but in a different articulation but you're not allowed to say play your c major scale in all of the articulations and then move to your minor scale harmonic Ah. minor scale and then play them all in the different articulations which i thought was really interesting that she's actually like felt it necessary to specify that yeah and I was wondering what your thought was actually you know what I, I, had, under, I had underlined that too with like a slight question mark now I'm looking mm. over my notes here and I'd mm-hmm. also highlighted like she says practice one articulation for the complete exercise and then one, mm-hmm. 11, one to 11 until you're satisfied mm-hmm. with your progress and then then you mm-hmm. move on and I thought that was interesting too well I was wondering if it was like um when practicing something, there are different styles of practicing. So mm. a section of a piece solid in terms of technique in your fingers, you, you get to a point where you do repetition of the same same section, which means that it, it's easier to play music once you've done it a few times over and over again because your brain's like, oh, yes, this is the familiar the familiar um, pattern of notes which we've been playing over and over again for the past while. Whereas if you come, you have a break and you've been playing something else and then you come, boom, straight into it, that really tests whether you know Uh, it well. mm -hmm. So I was wondering if this is what she's, so that it's like, boom, now you can play your major scale. Now go straight to your minor scale. Now go straight to your arpeggio. Now go straight to your chromatic. Like she's, she's kind of really making you be able to switch over, over and over and over again. Right. But then she does, but Mm. she does allow you to, like, you can repeat something until you're satisfied, but only on that articulation group. 
So you yes. say you're doing the yeah. the major scale slurred uh-huh. then you could as long as yeah. uh, once you're happy if you were unhappy with how you played it you could say hmm let me try that again but it would have to stay slurred mm-hmm. and then continue onwards um yeah mm-hmm. i was starting to with the more you talked i was thinking that as well that maybe it's just a way to help your brain familiar like it kind of puts the focus on articulation a little bit let's like okay mm-hmm. let's get this perfect in this style and then continue onwards okay like l- yeah. how well can you do this articulation style but now in a harmonic minor what are mm-hmm. the small nuances that you ha- need to focus on you know because they mm-hmm. are, th- it is a similar key however you do have different notes mm-hmm. and so then being mm-hmm. able to kind of finesse that a little bit more that okay. that's great. yeah that's actually a good point because if you notice the way she i, I really like how she has um, ordered the articulations that she wants mm-hmm. because it, you're right. It does start with legato, which is let's 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 admit the easiest articulation because it doesn't require any tongue movement. We're basically just blowing air and <laughs> moving our fingers. Yes, but then if you don't have even fingers, then it is tricky. Then yeah, but yeah, yeah, which is good <laughs> because then the legato helps you. Like it almost like helps you sort out oh, okay, so I've got unevenness in the fingers. It really helps you hone in on that. So you fix that Mm. with a legato, which then means you can move to the articulation, which is where you have to start combining your tongue moving at exactly the same time as your fingers, which, you know, it becomes an added layer of complexity in terms of what you're having to coordinate. Yeah, and it's really easy, like, to hear when it's uneven in the slurred. Mm-hmm. Like, it's very mm-hmm. easy to pick it out. Whereas with articulation, mm-hmm. there's um, more space between the notes, so it's a little harder to note mm-hmm. if it's actually aligned. Excellent. Well, that was good. I'm glad we had a mull over that. Yeah, so that was my week one was, uh, well, yes, as you said, I only got through half of the scales because I was practicing one scale family per day. Did your week two change at all, Alex? Ooh. Discover something different or what did you do? Yeah, so for week two, it wasn't too different. This was when we were officially moving in and it was no longer just Ooh. packing boxes. Mm. Um, but uh, mm. yes, yeah, so I, for week two, I did F sharp to B or for my German, any German mm-hmm. listeners, fest to ha. So, Ooh. <laughs> um, Ooh. Or fest. fest to ha. I know because B like in uh, German <laughs> is H in their musical alphabet and B flat. Is that how you can spell Bach in um, oh. yes in music? Yeah, uh, or how is she, yes. I think that's the same way that Shostakovich. Maybe I'm going off in the deep end, but like you know, he's able to write some things, and it's because he uses that. <laughs> but yeah, in German, yeah. it's B flat is B and B is H. So I continued that on. It was really nice just having that structure because then I didn't mm-hmm. like kind of how I'd set it up in the first week. Because normally I try to do something a little different in the second week, maybe change it up a bit. Yeah. But, between moving, mm-hmm. it was all I had in me just to, you know, no. touch base with my flute yeah. every once in a while and, and do these mm-hmm. every day. Um, so that was good. I did try to focus a little more on the articulation areas because at that point, too, it was like, okay, I know, I've got these patterns down. Um, and I, I really, I like that she puts in the little rhythms, where is it for number 10, mm. where she offers some ways to make it a little easier if it's a bit uneven, which sometimes I do struggle with too. Um, I was kind of wanting to combine this with book two as well and like mm-hmm. throw in some triplets and stuff, but this is all like, she's yeah. like quadruplets, <laughs> which is good. I mean, it's good. Like that's why she has both. You can do quadruplets or six tuplets, but just for the means of mm-hmm. this podcast, we were just focusing on the quadruplets and I really started to appreciate her, uh, diminished and dominant, um, chords mm. scales that she has in there because they're just nice to listen to a few times i did add a little a few extra high notes because i was working on the classical symphony by prokofiev for a little bit which goes up to a little higher than that four octave c that i mentioned earlier it goes all the way up to a d so for example Mm -hmm. when i did b major i i did check in a few extra notes it was a little uh (laughs) rough to listen to but um (laughs) but it um (laughs) It worked out really, it worked out okay. And then uh, something I forgot to mention before, but like you you had said, Jen, earlier, um, she has a, mm. a list of study books in the back as well. And so I tried mm-hmm. to get a few um, 
to to do some etudes out of, and I just I ended up going back to the one uh, that my flute professor in Texas has, the Flute Etudes book by uh, Mary Karen Quarty. And so I did a yeah. few of her, the ones in there. She's got some, she, she selected some from Cargillaire that are really nice. And then, all, um, where is he? The Anderson, Opus 15. They also had some nice ones in there. So I did those um, as like some etudes to help supplement what I was doing. But other than that, I was keeping it nice and straightforward with, you know, 30 minutes, go through my flute technique um, with like a little bit of a warm up from the consequences sequence and initially. And then, yeah, did an etude, did an excerpt, and then I called it a day. Usually it took me about one hour because between the moving and my nice. allergies, that's that's about all I, can, all I can manage. And sometimes that's okay. So, Do you know what? Considering you were moving, I think that's pretty amazing, actually. Wow. Oh, thank you. Yes. So, uh, but yeah, so that was fun. Uh, how was your week two, Jen? Okay. Yes. So, week one, mm -hmm. I just did the scales. Then, um, week two, I kind of decided I would explore her checklist or practice routine for a weekly system, which she also gives in the book. I yes. know. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I was taking a page from your book Alex oh. and I like got a got a checklist going Heck yes as I mentioned before I was a little bit um stumped by the fact she didn't have a warm-up so but in her checklist which she gives as a suggestion for a weekly system of how to practice mm. she actually has a warm-up included or warm-up suggestions and she suggests that you should warm up for 10 to 20 minutes Yay. every day with one of the following and she gives us a, a whole list of suggestions so for example your favorite slow melody tone development through interpretation by Moyes um, many others by Moyes um, yeah anyway so this was I went for my classic tone development through interpretation because that kicks my butt every time and then okay so that's the checklist so number one warm up for 10 to 20 minutes with your favorite slow melody or something from one of these books which she gives the suggestion for and then she says number two then you do scales which you've chosen to do from this book mm -hmm. uh then she says three progress to your current study and then four progress to your current repertoire and then underneath this she says while building your technique, in my opinion, you should spend two-thirds of your practice time on scales, arpeggios, and study work. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I organize my time. I thought it was a really nice, a nice, clear system. And, um, and what I really liked about it was she didn't give us particular time that you should, apart from the warm-ups, she didn't give a particular time of how much um, you should spend except for this ratio of you should spend two thirds of your time on scales, arpeggios and study work. Because, um, I don't know about you, but sometimes when someone gives you me like a block of time, oh, you should spend three hours on your mm. scale studies and arpeggios and the fourth hour should be on your repertoire. I, I can find myself switching off and watching the clock Ooh. instead of actually yeah. focusing. Mm -hmm. And also like you can start getting a bit stressed. Um, and you know, if, if you've got this, kind of system where it's like you must practice two hours of your scales every day if you can't do that because of life which it always happens I can get this kind of guilt or panic about it almost yeah like I feel oh no I can't do it for the amount of time this is I'm gonna fail as a flute player this is the end oh my gosh mm -hmm. I'm gonna wake up tomorrow <laughs> a worse player oh, no. you know like it's yeah. weird it can kind of you feel like you're failing before you've even done anything whereas I like this kind of two-thirds of your practice time because it doesn't matter how much you do that day you've turned up to your instrument you've worked on something you've focused on it you've achieved something mm -hmm. and it's a win you know um so that's what I really liked about the way that she how she's chosen her words in that section I thought that was um very um Modern day friendly. Yeah, I think it's very... Or just life friendly. Yeah, I think modern day mm. friendly is a nice way to put it. It's not outdated. I think it's very of the times, you know. It's well, it's like mm -hmm. how you see a lot of things now. It's just... It, the focus is not on duration. It's on like the art of showing up and being consistent. 
a little bit, you know, Mm -hmm. which is, you know, when you have more moments of brilliance on your art or in your art form. Uh, Yeah. And I think that's really what I felt. And and plus, as you mentioned, her fantastic list of study Mm -hmm. books at the end. There were a few I'd never heard of. And I really like the look of this. 24 Bach studies by right? Schindler. I was thinking that too. I like, was intrigued. What are these Bach studies that uh, I think I've maybe yes. done one or two because I think that he transposes or oh. there are a few transposed ones out there I've seen in um, books of like uh, groups, but I don't know if these are by Schindler or not. But yes, also the, the yeah. modern studies for flute by Giovanni Gatti, never heard of. I'm very excited to look into those too. And there yes. was also the Kunst, yes. Kunstlehrstudien. So, but, uh, but yeah, anyways, uh, that I'd also not heard of. But um, no, that sounds like an awesome second week, dude. And an awesome two weeks in general. Yeah, so I really like that. I just really appreciated, um, yes, she just made it. It was um, very clear. But I think I'm moving into verdict territory. Maybe. So, maybe. So, Alex, <laughs> yes, your verdict... <laughs> My verdict. Um, first off, can I say I forgot to mention her picture on the back oh, yes. of the book is just this. It's a picture of her instructing somebody and it's just captured this beautiful look, which is I, I only associate with Sue and um, more with Susan. Oh, yes. Where yes, she's yes, just yes. looking and she looks like like so proud. But then also, also just a tiny bit of like, okay, we're going to make this even better next. Like, it's just, it's really encapsulated yeah. that. So before I forget, yeah. love that photo. It's just, it's gorgeous. But yeah, so my verdict, I think that her, I mean, listeners already know that we love Susan Milan. She's a fantastic mm-hmm. te- uh, teacher, fantastic flautist, and just really has paved the way for women flutists or flautists as well. So... Uh, so this book, I think, yeah, what can I say? It's great. It's great for all ages. It's got the, mm-hmm. um, I think, unlike how she has in the book two, I think she had like one that was like for beginners and then for in- intermediate advanced sets of scales where it didn't go mm-hmm. up so high. This one only does the high, mm-hmm. but it would be quite easy to change that for any beginner um, flute players out there who want to give it a go. Or maybe you could use, I would say this book is an excellent stop, uh, like jumping off point if you wanted to look into, you know, expanding your scales for the first time, but in like a comfortable setting because Mm. she kind of just lays it out like here they are and you can choose your speed, preferably I think at 108, I think Mm -hmm. her her starting tempo, but but yeah, it's, um, it's fantastic. I loved everything about it. I, I wish that she had a nice little, her little warm up in here as well. Totally forgot about that from book two. Thank you for bringing that up, Jen, because it would also work in here mm. because it wasn't necessarily sex tuplet based. It was just, you know, a set of arpeggios where you start on the high notes or on the low notes and then just focus on getting that air column going consistently. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be mm-hmm. nice. But, I mean, obviously that's in the second book. So the second book, she had time to do revisions from the first book. Um, but this one, mm. uh, it's just a solid, a solid book. And I'm I'm kind of sad that it, it was a little tricky for us to find. Uh, we found it on her website. But yeah, other than that, that was it. I think that's it. Maybe there's a few it's copies in available. the UK. But, yeah, I want... Um, you know, a second yes. edition with uh, maybe a new forward too yep. from Susan about how it's affected all of her students. And but yes, uh, excellent book. And it's so it's so easy to pack. It's small. It's got everything you need. Mm-hmm. It's succinct, precise. Mm-hmm. Go go to her website. Order this book. Yeah, a good resource and a good way to bust out your scales in a short period of time. Mm-hmm. So that's my verdict. Um, all right, nice. Jen. What was your verdict? Look, very, very similar to yours. <laughs> um, I think this is this is a great resource. It's so adaptable. And I also think it's um, – she's just formatted it so clearly. Like, it packs such a lot of stuff into such a short amount mm. of time. This is just really great. Like, you can basically expand it out or condense it in. Um, to as much as you have time for that day to do really great work on your scales. I think it's good for intermediate because 
Um, like, as you say, the, the main scales do go up to full range, but with the, um, with the uh, diminished and the dominance, like, she does have an intermediate version for those, mm. so it's not hitting the high Cs and high Ds. And, um, and yeah, as you say, you could easily kind of adapt it. So you just go up to whichever note you feel comfortable with in terms of the scales and the arpeggios. And, and I thought it was also really good for advanced, just purely because of the, the speeds she's suggesting. Mm-hmm. So, yes, but she's like, you should be aware that there are pieces in the repertoire, which you need to be going at 160. <laughs> yes. So, you know, if you're playing all of these scales at 160, you're going to be all set. Yep. And yeah, oh, and all the articulations which she adds in. So it's it's um I think this is a really great scales resource for everyone. And I mean, as she says in the forward, she says um it's best if you can memorize these. So you know, after a couple of weeks, probably you just don't even need to bring the book. It's just all in your yeah. mind, and you can just take it with you wherever I you go. I can see them being pretty easy but, to um, um, keep into your head because the pattern's very similar each time. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it'd just be remembering what the exactly. range is of. Uh, where you're Although going. I did just think of something. Yeah. I wish she had thirds in there. Then it would be complete for me. Yeah, scales, scales and thirds. And thirds. Yeah. Um, I think she does mm. in book two. But in book one, it is just the major, the minors, the diminished, the dominant sevenths, and the chromatic, mm. which is already like super. Mm. But that is one thing I remember thinking yeah. in one of the weeks. I was like, oh man, I wish there were some thirds yeah. in here. So, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's okay. It's only, the, there's all the other the, stuff. The, the, <laughs> she's got, <laughs> yeah. It's really good. So. So yeah, I think that's my verdict. I think uh, yeah, I I also let's I also endorse go and buy this book. Let's crash her website. <laughs> exactly. Um, Take the server down, everybody, and go go buy this book. <laughs> In the revolution begins. <laughs> uh, sorry, Susan, if you're listening to this. Um, I think um, yeah, this is a great book. Mm-hmm. It's definitely staying on the stand, as you like to say. Uh-huh. And I think that's yeah, it. I think that is it. I, I'm glad that we have a similar mind this week. Although I think normally our minds are pretty similar. <laughs> we just go about things differently, which yeah. is really, it's so cool. We do. <laughs> um, so yes, listeners, thank you so much for listening to our episode today. Let us know what you thought. You can write to us at thepracticeodyssey at gmail.com. Um, or if you're feeling especially lovely, then you could go leave us a rating or a comment on Apple Podcasts. That does help the rest of the world learn about our podcast as well, and it's very helpful. Um, if you're not a big podcast listener and you want to listen to us on YouTube, you can also find us on YouTube by searching the Practice Odyssey podcast. And you can also subscribe to us there and leave us a comment at a particular point in our episodes so that we know exactly what you're talking about. A few listeners have done that, and I usually try to get back fairly quickly. And mm-hmm. then the music in this episode was written by moi, Alessandra Woods, and our show art is from the amazing Ivan Potter Smith. Go check out his website too. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in this week, listeners. We'll be back in two weeks or a fortnight for my British Aussie friends. Until next time, take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.